hospital and this is our citizens health care service delivery charter. You can see the services that we render, the requirements and the use of the charges. And this is the duration of time a patient is supposed to wait, the waiting time. I am now with Mrs. Nita, nursing officer of Bahati Sub County Hospital. Mrs. Nita, nursing officer. Please tell us how many patients do you treat per day here at your hospital? We treat around 300 patients per day outpatient services. And how many staff members does your hospital have? We have a sub county medical officer of health. We have a medical superintendent, one pediatrician, four doctors. We have 30 nurses and 50 paramedics. Yes. I am now with Dr. Toromo Koche, who is the sub county medical officer of health from the entire Nakuro North region. Dr. Toromo Koche, kindly introduce yourself and give us your medical experience. Thank you very much. My name is Dr. Toromo Koche. I am a senior assistant director of medical services working for the Kenyan government. I have an experience of over 20 years. And in these 20 years, I have worked in Moy Teaching and Referral Hospital, Eldoret, as a medical officer. I have also worked in Paringo District as a district medical officer of health for the entire uh, district. And I was based in Cabernet District Hospital. I have also worked at the provincial level as a provincial aids and STI coordinator for Rift Valley uh, province when I was based in Nakuru. And currently, I am based in Nakuru North. I'm the sub-county medical officer of health for the entire Nakuru North sub-county. And uh, our aim is to offer integrated, high-quality, promotive, preventive, curative, and rehabilitative services to our patients in all our facilities. That is why you saw our service charter. We are very thorough. We want to make sure that our clients are healthy. And you know very well that the definition for health is uh, in a state of complete well-being, physically, mentally, and socially. We have uh, surgical services. We have maternal child health services. We have uh, voluntary counseling and testing services. We have uh, outpatient services. So we have quite a range of services. We also have youth-friendly services in the facility to address the issues of the young generation. Dr. Toromo Kuche, in the process of offering such a broad and wide medical facilities and medical services, have you ever come across difficult, severe cases where you actually see people dying? And if so, what do you do? Our aim actually is to make sure that all our patients live as long as possible. But at times we experience death. Sometimes our patients die in the process of medication. Before they die actually, we normally have to struggle to resuscitate to make sure that they are alive. But once in a while, some of our patients may end up dying. In your 20 years of medical practice, you said that you had times where you were able to help your patients. You were able to, to do certain treatments, certain medical surgeries, so that way they do not die. But what happened to those who were actually dying? What happened to those patients that died? Were you able to reverse? Well, in my 20 years of medical experience, I have seen patients die, but there is no time when I have personally, nor have I seen any person reversing somebody who has actually died back to life. I have all the books of medicine that I have studied, and there is nowhere in the medical books or in the medical journals that there is reversal of death. When is you die? that is finished. This is just but few of the books that I have gone through. Like you see the way they are so voluminous. 
and uh, there is nowhere that is indicating that uh, death has been reversed. Yeah. yeah, that is pathology mm. in medicine. All these books, yeah. there is nowhere. So the only treatment for a dead person is the preservative. You preserve the person for burial. You are aware of this extremely shocking case, the resurrection of Mama Rosa. She was dead and is now alive. What can you say from the medical perspective? Because now, if I look at the newspapers, everywhere it is written about Mama Rosa's resurrection. Hundreds flock to the village of Mama Rosa. Even you have been there in this village of Mama Rosa. What can you give us from a medical point of view? I am aware of Mama Rosa. Who, who died and also resurrected. I have been following this case as a medical doctor and it has actually shocked me because as I said earlier on, in my practice of uh, medicine for the 20 years that I have practiced medicine, I have never come across a case of reversal of death. So this case of Mamarosa has shocked me and has also shocked my colleagues the medics because in medicine we have no explanation for this maybe just to explain to you a little bit of uh, what it means to live sustainance of life life is sustained by systems in the body and i have about five systems in the body there are of course other minor systems but uh, let me talk about the major systems that support life in the body we have the gastrointestinal tract this system is the system that provides the food that is required for the energy of the body. And then we have the respiratory system. The respiratory system is the system that comprises of the lungs. This is the system that provides oxygen for the body. And then we have the cardiovascular system. The cardiovascular system comprises of the heart, which is the pump, and the blood vessels. The main role is to distribute this oxygenated blood to the various parts of the body, including the brain. The other system that is critical for sustenance of life is the central nervous system. This system comprises the brain, the spinal cord, and the nerves. Its role is mainly coordination. But one thing which is very critical about this uh, system is that if it is deprived of oxygenated blood more than three minutes, it just dies. So you cannot afford to, 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 to underperfuse or to undersupply the brain of oxygenated blood for more than three minutes, it will die. Mm -hmm. So for this case of Mama Rosa, following from the history and the physical examination before and after the resurrection, this is a case that actually died. This uh, woman underwent processes of death. She had palamotis, you know, she started becoming pale immediately after she had died. After some few minutes, she, become, she became pale. We also have alkamotis. Alkamotis is you become cold because there is no circulation, no blood circulation in the body. She also underwent that particular stage. Then she went to the stage of rigamotis. Rigamotis is a stiffening of the joints because there is no nutrient we call adenosine triphosphate which is required by the normal activity of the muscles, muscle contraction. So this was, was also undersupplied. So the, muscle, the, the muscles of the body became stiffen. The joints could not move. That is stage also mama rosa reach. Then we have liver motis, another stage of death. So in this stage, there is hypostasis of the blood in the most dependent parts of the body. Mm -hmm. The blood, there is no circulation now, so the blood will be static. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that one is also a stage of, of death. Then she had also, maybe now she was going to the stage of uh, putrefaction. The body now is getting broken down now, mm -hmm. the, 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 the tissues of the body now. Mm -hmm. And then immediately she was going to, the, to reach the stage of decomposition. And then skeletonization now. So you see all those stages were on course. So for that period of two hours, you could not even talk of reversing 
Mamarosa back to life. It was a dead corpse. It was only waiting for mortuary. It was only to be preserved mm. so that doesn't begin putrefaction and decomposition before it is buried. Following now the medical point of view concerning the case of the resurrection of Mama Rosa, we can clearly see that medicine has its limitations, whereby I know that Pastor Samson, the husband of Mama Rosa, asked for a prayer request that his senior pastor sends a prayer request to the mightiest prophet of the Lord. When the message came back, the message had those three words, it is well. And Pastor Samson, he took this message and he said that he now wants to celebrate and he started celebrating with, in, with his entire family around the dead body of Mama Rosa. And after they were celebrating for one and a half hours, Mama Rosa started coughing. She started sneezing. And then she started even speaking. What is your conclusion now in this case? I went to see Mama Rosa after resurrection. She was in a complete state of uh, health. She was physically well. She could eat. She was uh, mentally well. She could memorize everything. She could greet people, laugh. She was also socially well because she could interact with people. So for me, what I can say is this. Yes, medicine can fail and it can fail in any part of the world, however developed it may be. It can fail in Europe, it can fail in Africa, and it can result in death. When such happens, you cannot rely on doctors because we cannot do beyond that. Medicine has got a limitation. So my advice is, when this happens, we need the intervention of the, of the supernatural. We can only be God. This incident of Mama Rosa has uh, shocked me as a doctor because I have never seen this in all my practice. This is a new chapter in the life, you know, in medicine. I wish this one can be incorporated in medicine so that people now, instead of hurrying to take a, a corpse to the mortuary, they wait for the supernatural intervention. I like the way Mama Rosa, they waited. And when they waited, it surely came. And it came after two hours meaning there was no need even to hurry we should not hurry now disposing bodies because we need to wait on the supernatural power from the lord in me i see as a doctor i appreciate the power of the lord it is power beyond medicine